Hello Internet, it's Big Stiffy here, and I'm going to teach you how to set up Minecraft, uh, Minecraft to run on Debian Linux. Um, I'm not going to teach you how to set up Debian itself because there's other tutorials out there that do that. Um, to get Minecraft running on Debian Linux smoothly, um, uh, what I found was best was to use the, uh, def the actual Java um, uh, <coughs> JRE instead of OpenJDK, which comes pre installed on Debian. Um, now, my system is 64 bit. I'm not going to cover how to set it up on uh, 32 bit because yeah, I've yet to do so. So, it should basically be the same process but a little bit different. Um, one of the things you're going to need in order to install. Java is you're going to have to go directly to the Oracle website, oracle.com. Uh, you don't have to copy this link. You can go to Google and type in Java 7 because uh, that's what I run. I run Java 7 on my system. And because I'm running 64-bit, uh, I need the Linux x64 download. Now, once you click Accept License Agreement, you can download it. Um, what you want to do is you want to download the tar.gz file, not the RPM. So go ahead, uh, click J uh, click download on JRE7U5 Linux x64 uh, tar.gz. And I moved uh, my download to my home folder just because I figured it would be a little bit simpler. And what you want to do from there is you want to extract it. Now, how you want to extract it is you want to do it from a command line. Uh, and, and you also need to be a super user in order to do this. So, what you want to type is sudo or sudo tar zxf or zxvf jre 7u5 linux x64.tar.gz dash capital C. It's a capital C, not lowercase. And you want to type backslash user backslash lib64 backslash jvm. And what that'll do is that'll extract the download that you just um, the, the, the uh, package you just got. It'll extract it to uh, this directory right here. So we'll extract it to that directory, and from there, it's not installed yet. Uh, what you want to do is you'll, you also you need super user for this command as well. So type sudo update dash alternatives space two hyphens install space dash user dash bin or slash bin slash java space java space dash user dash lib dot or dash jvm dash jre uh, 1.7.0 dash or underscore not dash underscore 05 dash bin dash java 1065 and I keep saying dash when I should be saying backslash so those are all backslashes not hyphens <clears throat> and what this command does is it installs the uh, package you just extracted from, uh, or the package you just extracted to the user lib jvm folder into user bin java, and it tells it that it's java with uh, this extra java here. And this 1065, that's giving it a priority. It's giving it it's giving it top priority on your system so it will use that before it will use any other Java version installed on your system and once you install that uh, what you can do is you can type uh, Java hyphen version and that will tell you that you are now running uh, JRE version 7 uh, 7.0 or uh, 1.7.0.05 and now it's installed. Um, 
From there, uh, what you want to do is you want to download Minecraft from Minecraft's website. Uh, that's not difficult to do. Except you want the jar version. You do not want the executable. So it has to it has to say dot jar at the end of Minecraft. It can't say dot exe because it won't start. <clears throat> from there, um, now I'm going to teach you how to also uh, set up a RAM disk on Debian. Just because um, Minecraft by itself it's going to be pretty slow on Debian Linux um, as it is with Windows just because it's limited to the read and write speed of your hard drive so every time new terrain starts to generate it gets really slow all of a sudden but I'm gonna teach you how to set up a RAM disk so that you can avoid that and in Debian it's pretty easy um, <clears throat> I have set up uh, several different uh, scripts and commands to uh, make this a little bit simpler. Now what I can do is I can type alias and that tells me all the commands that I have that have an alias to make it easier to run them. And for ramdisk uh, my command is sudo mount hyphen t tempfs tmpfs none backslash mnt backslash ramdisk. Now this is the folder that it's going to mount uh, ram2. That's where the ramdisk is going to be located. However, that folder does not exist yet. So what you want to type is sudo mkdir and this will make a directory and then you want to type backslash mnt backslash ramdisk and when you run that command you'll be prompted for your password of course you put in your password and it will create that it will create that directory in your system now from there I also have a bunch of other aliases as you can see this one is set by set by default <coughs> um, now I have MC restore now MC Restore, you don't need this right now. In fact, you don't need MC Backup, MC Restore, or Minecraft right now. Instead, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to create... Uh, well, actually, you're going to want to launch Minecraft once. Only once. And uh, f uh, you can do that just by typing Java... Um, dash... Actually, I think you can just type Java dash jar. No. All right. Well, I'll give I'll give you the uh, contents of my launching script in order to do it. <clears throat> so this right here tells you how to launch Minecraft, and there's one important thing that I forgot to mention. Um, because you're running uh, the you're running a version of Java direct from uh, Sun, Java, or Oracle, you have to update something in your system. You have to update your path, your LD library path. And to do that, you have to type export LD library path, and those are underscores. Um, so you want, you want to, actually, let me see. I'm going to open this with uh... uh oh I can't okay well not gonna worry about that for now just uh, get rid of that so let's see I'm gonna type g edit launch sh okay so here you can see <laughs> I have a simple bash script set up and this is a pound sign um, exclamation mark backslash bin backslash bash what that does is it tells it tells the system what directory to look in to find uh, the bash uh, the bash application in the system now it could be sh but bash has more functionality and I just use that by default so you have to type export 
space ld underscore library underscore path equals, um, and you need the quotation marks, backslash user, backslash lib, backslash jvm, backslash jre1, period 7, period 0, underscore 0, 05, backslash lib, backslash amd64. And that tells the system where to look for this variable. And from there, um, this is my command for launching uh, Minecraft. However, you do not need this pad SP. And if you do not have at least eight gigs of memory, you're gonna want to change this. Um, I have it set to use eight gigs maximum and six gigs minimum. So what you can do is you can set to use uh, maybe like uh, one gig maximum and uh, I don't know 586 M for megabytes <laughs> and that sets its maximum and minimum RAM usage which if it doesn't have that it'll, it'll set it up by it on its own you can really get rid of that if you want to because uh, you don't need it for now and then you use uh, hyphen cp uh, minecraft.jar net.minecraft.launcherframe and you do have to capitalize L and F in launcher frame <laughs> and this will launch Minecraft for you now what you can do is if you're running gedit uh, you, will, you can um, type all this into gedit and save it as launch.sh and I don't want to save that and from there what you can do is you can just uh, type in bash launch.sh and that will run it from your home folder now I don't have to uh, type bash launch.sh in order to run Minecraft every time what I can do is I can set up an alias for it. So I can, oops, I can type alias Minecraft equals uh, quotation mark bash launch.sh. And when I hit enter, that's going to save that in the system. So every time I type Minecraft and hit enter, it's going to run that command instead. From there, what you can do, um, once you've started Minecraft, you can close Minecraft, but only after you've logged in. You want to launch Minecraft, uh, log in, and then once it finishes downloading all the packages and everything, close out of Minecraft completely, and then what you can do is you can uh, copy or move Minecraft, so you want to type MV period Minecraft, oops, yeah, I can type Minecraft and then you want to tell it where to move it to so you can type space or I'm actually I'm actually thinking you're probably gonna need to do use this as a super user so type sudo mv dot Minecraft backslash mount backslash RAM disk <clears throat> and type another backslash just for the heck of it and that will move the Minecraft uh, app data folder to the RAM disk. So now it's going to be really quick when it loads up next time. And from there, what you can do is you, need, you actually need to make a symbolic link to Minecraft. Because now that you've moved the Minecraft folder, Minecraft isn't going to be able to find it. It's not going to be f able to find the data it needs in order to run. So what you can type you can type ln dot or dash s um, let's see if I can remember this <laughs> okay ln dot dash s and I think it's going to be mount ram disk minecraft and like that and if I'm correct, that should move, it should actually create a link from Minecraft in the RAM disk 
to your home directory. And if it, and one way to check if it works is you can type ls a, and you can look through this list. And if you see Minecraft, or if you do not see Minecraft, it should show up in this light blue color. You should see dot Minecraft, and it, it's all alphabetical, so it shouldn't take long to find. And from there, what you can do is if it doesn't show up, then I told you to do the command wrong, so you want to type lns um, minecraft mount ram disk minecraft. And then you can type that command in, and it should be correct. I always forget which way it works, if it's that way or the other way. But in any case, that's how you set it up. And again, you can check by typing ls-a, and I'll show you everything in your home folder. Uh, from there, now you've got Minecraft itself in the RAM disk. So you're doing pretty good so far. Uh, what you can do is you can set up a script for uh, backing up Minecraft, which is what I have done. I already showed you how to create the launch script and how to create an alias for it. But let's tell you, let's show you how to uh, create the, the Minecraft backup script. That is this script right here. And I'll open that with gedit. Okay. Here it shows you how to uh, create a backup. Now, I've set this script to create a backup for days. Now, you can set it up for hours, but I'm not going to go into that. I'm just going to show you how mine works. <clears throat> it's got the pound uh, exclamation point and bin bash uh, as the other one did. Now I'm also setting a variable. So I typed var equals <clears throat> and I'm running the command. So I want a command to be the variable. And what this command is doing, it's date plus percent f. That tells me the year, month, and day. So my variable is going to be the year, month, and day in that order, I think. Uh, then you want to, of course, it has to be in brackets. So you can pretty much just copy this uh, character for character. Um, then you want to type make directory home save there. Now in front of now home, that's your home directory. It has to be capitalized and it has to have this dollar sign. That's where your documents, downloads, pictures and everything is for your account. And it tell and you should create a save folder. So what you want to do is you want to just type mkdrr dir uh, and then save. Or you can make it whatever you want. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be saved. That's just what I made it. And it has dollar sign variable. So it's going to create a folder that is today's date. So whatever today's year, month, and day is, that's going to be the name of the folder. And then what it's going to do, it's going to copy Minecraft from the RAM disk into the folder it just created. Now like I said, uh, this can be done for hours. Um, if you type uh, date into a terminal and type help, it shows you all the different kinds of formats that you can do it in. You can have it pretty much however you want. Um, but in order to get uh, a certain format, it has to be date plus percent uh, whatever the letter is. So if I wanted a uh, if I wanted 24 hour hour and minute same as HM, I would need capital R. So what I want to do is type date plus percent capital R, and that shows me the hours and minutes in military time. 
And if I want to, uh, let's see, what do I want to do? Let's see, there's gotta be something else I can use. Something interesting. Okay, full date. <laughs> yeah, year, month, and day. That's what I use for my script. Um, let's see. But if I just want the hour from like, uh, let's say from uh, 1 to 12 and the year. So let's see, I can type date plus percent F. Oops, that's dollar sign. Percent F. And then percent. Let's see, what was, what was that letter? Oh, it's I. Percent I. Now that shows me the date and the hour. Of course, it kind of messed up because uh, now I have uh, 1,005. I don't want that. So um, what I want is I want something in between that. So let's see. Let's try space, oops, F underscore percent I. Okay, so now that gives me the hour, which it's now 542, and an underscore in between the date and the hour. Now I can really set that up however I want, it doesn't matter. So that's the basic gist of how that works. Now for the MC restore script that I have. I'll open that. Now what you want to do is do the same for the other two scripts. You want the bin bash. Uh, what this does is it uh, shows you all the folders in the save folder. It lists all the folders in save. And then it echoes uh, dash n date to restore which this just uh, prints out on the screen what date do you want to restore and then you'd have to type in whatever date you wanted so let's see I'll go and type ls save so it'll show me all these folders what I'd have to do is I'd have to type in one of the folder names so if I wanted the most recent one it would be 2012-07-06 and that would now load that save. It would copy it from the save folder to the RAM disk which this is going to come in handy a lot mainly because whenever you restart your computer or shut it off the RAM disk becomes unmounted and everything that was in the RAM disk is gone forever so you do need these backup and uh, restoration scripts they're going to save you a lot of heartache trust me and from there that's that's pretty much it that explains how everything's done and uh, with the uh, launch script like I said your system may not be able to support 8 gigs of RAM or even 6 gigs which, if that's the case, um, you want to change how much XMX and XMS is set at. If you if you have a very low memory system, um, let's say maybe you have four gigs of memory, uh, what you'd want to do is you want to set the maximum which is this, XMX is the maximum amount of memory that Minecraft can use. You would want to set this to maybe 512 M, not G. M is for megabytes, G is for gigabytes. And I actually should have made that 1G. So I'll set that as 1G, and this, the minimum, I'll set as 512 M. So now it can only use a minimum of 512 megabytes or a maximum of 1000 or 1024 megabytes or 1 gigabyte. Now, 
there are a few other things that help Minecraft to run if you are on a 64-bit system. You might have trouble with audio, like I did. To fix the audio, what you want to do is have pad SP in front of Java. That may fix the audio for you, but if it does not, there is another fix. What I needed to do, let's see, I'll go into my downloads. I needed to download LWJGL284. I had to download this, and basically with this, what you have to do is you have to replace a few files. Um, these files control the input and output of Minecraft, so um, it gets rid of the ghost mouse clicking uh, when you're playing Minecraft. Like if you're uh, maybe trying to uh, sort your inventory and you're doing a lot of mouse clicking, you might see the mouse or the pointer show up on the screen and you're like, why is it showing up? I'm in the game. This fixes it and it should fix it for your system as much as it did for mine. What you have to replace is you have to replace J input LW uh, JGL and LWJGL util. So when you select all those files, you replace them in the Minecraft bin folder. It replaces these three files here. But that's not all. You have to replace the natives files. So if you go back to this and download native, or yeah, if you want to go into Linux, you want to select all of these and copy them into this folder and replace them. So that's bin Minecraft bin natives. And you want to replace all those files. <clears throat> and that should fix all the problems you have with sound or that ghost mouse clicking. And I think Minecraft runs a little bit better with that installed anyway. So that's pretty much all you have to do. Um, if you can't find LWJGL to download, I will put a link in the description. And from there you're set. Uh, there's really nothing else to do. Now of course with uh, launching these uh, launch, restore, and backup scripts, um, you may be wondering, okay, how do I, how do I uh, make this so that I don't have to keep typing bash MC backup or MC restore every time I want to use them? Well, what you want to do is you want to create a new file. So what you want to do is you want to type gedit dot bash underscore aliases and hit enter. Now this will bring up your bash aliases file. It's going to be empty by default, so it's okay if you don't see a file. Um, this file basically makes it so that all these aliases load as soon as you log in. Because by default, aliases do not save. So every time you restart, you'd have to do the alias command again. So you want to type alias ram disk and then the command for mounting the ram disk, alias mc restore bash mc restore uh, alias MC backup bash MC backup .sh. alias Minecraft equals bash uh, tilde backslash launch .sh. Now, you don't really need that because you don't need it for MC restore or MC backup as long as the files are in your home directory you do not need that And that'll make it so that all you have to do is type RAM disk, MC restore, and then Minecraft. And then you type MC backup anytime you want to shut off your system or restart. And now you're set. That's pretty much all you have to do. Um, I hope this made it a little bit easier for anyone wanting to run Minecraft on Debian Linux, especially the 64-bit version. Um, because I had to figure all this stuff out for myself and it took me quite a while so hopefully this saves you a bit of time when setting it up for yourself. Well that's all for this video internet. Take care and 